Many cell types move their nuclei to a specific location in the cytoplasm, which can be essential for diverse cellular processes including polarization and differentiation. Defects in nuclear positioning can result in diseases including muscular dystrophies. Daniel Starr from the University of California in Davis studies nuclear migration in the outermost hypodermal cells of the C. elegans embryo. Two rows of cells intercalate across the dorsal midline. The cell's nuclei then migrate through the cytoplasm from one side of the embryo to the other and become anchored in their new location before the hypodermal cells fuse to form a multinucleate syncytium. The hypodermis is great because of the ease that we can film nuclear migration. We have mutants in this and we can quantify our phenotype. Two such mutants are UNC83 and UNC84, in which the hypodermal nuclei end up stuck along the embryo's dorsal midline. UNC83 and UNC84 are members of two conserved families of nuclear envelope proteins characterized by their Sun and Cache domains. Sun and Cache proteins form this bridge to connect the nucleus skeleton to the cytoskeleton. We knew that UNC84 as a Sun protein in the inner nuclear membrane recruited UNC83 to the outer nuclear membrane. But what we didn't know until more recently is once UNC83 was on the outer nuclear membrane, how did it mediate migration? Heidi and Maria Meyerson, another student from the lab, did a two-hybrid screen with the cytoplasmic domain of UNC83 and they identified in papers that we published in development and developmental biology that UNC83 interacts with regulators of dynein and regulators of kinesin. So, you know, it was a little bit confusing. How do two motors of opposite polarity function together to move nuclei? And we couldn't figure this out genetically or biochemically, so what we really needed to do was view the nuclei moving in real time to begin to understand how the relative roles of dynein and, and, and kinesin were regulated. The researchers began by looking at hypodermal nuclear migration in wild-type embryos. Shortly after the completion of intercalation, the nuclei began to migrate, and it would migrate about 20 microns in a period of 10 to 15 minutes. And it would migrate from one lateral side of the embryo to the other lateral side across the dorsal cord. Higher resolution imaging revealed that the nuclei's journey wasn't plain sailing, however. The nuclei often paused or took short steps backward in between their forward movements. When you think about it, you know, the nucleus is this huge cargo. It's the width of the whole cell. You have to deal with all the organelles that are in your way as you're trying to move this gigantic nucleus. So you can imagine the drag on this nucleus is going to be huge. The endoplasmic reticulum, for example, is remodeled as the nucleus migrates through it. But what happens in the absence of the sun and cache proteins? In the UNC83 and UNC84 mutants, the cells intercalated normally that the nuclei just didn't move. And much later in development, they would then be pushed to the middle of the cell, the dorsal cord, probably due to muscles underneath these very thin hypodermal cells. A mutation in the kinesin light chain, KLC2, gave a similar phenotype, as nuclei largely failed to migrate through the hypodermal cells. Investigating dynein's function was trickier, as the minus N directed motor is required for early embryonic viability. Instead, Friedolfsson and Starr disrupted the two dynein regulatory complexes that directly bind to UNC83. Blocking either complex alone caused a weak nuclear migration defect, but more nuclei mislocalized when both regulatory complexes were inhibited simultaneously. The nuclei started out moving fairly normally. They initiated the movement at the right time and they moved at the right speed. And many of the nuclei would just keep on migrating normally. And some of the nuclei would sort of get stuck near the middle. And when we looked at them at a higher time resolution, we noticed a difference between the dynein mutants and wild type. In the dynein mutants, we never saw the short backwards movements. It would just keep plowing ahead forward. And so what we hypothesized was the percentage of nuclei that failed to migrate in a dynein mutant could not resolve a blockage of organelles and other vesicles in front of it by backing up. The researchers identified another mechanism that could help nuclei get past cytoplasmic blockages. We were looking carefully at one of our wild type migraine nuclei and, and we saw it literally roll about one and a half times over the course of a couple minutes and 
associated with the rolling was a release of what looked like a blockage of vesicles in front of the nucleus. And you could see as the nucleus rolled, the vesicles squeezed by the side of the nucleus. A combination of backing up and rolling could therefore help nuclei bypass cytoplasmic roadblocks. Both of these processes are inhibited in the absence of dynein function, causing some nuclei to get stuck on their journey through the hypodermal cytoplasm. So the hypothesis is that kinesin is pulling the nucleus forward, and sometimes kinesin can just pull itself through this blockage of vesicles and organelles in front of it, but sometimes the blockage gets too strong and kinesin needs some sort of help. So it either needs to back up a little bit or the nucleus needs to roll, and we think that dynein can help in that. As microtubule motors, dynein and kinesin must move the nuclei along microtubule tracks. Friedolfsson and Starr confirmed previous observations that, as hypodermal cells intercalate, their microtubules reorganize from a meshwork into parallel bundles along the length of the cells. Surprisingly, photobleaching indicated that these bundles were highly dynamic rather than stable structures. Well, if it's not a stable bundle, it still somehow has to be polar if kinesin is going to keep moving it in a continuous direction. So Heidi made a uh, GFP fusion protein to the EB1 homolog, which marks the plus ends of growing microtubules. And she got these beautiful movies. And during nuclear migration, more than 90% of the microtubules that were growing were growing with their plus ends in the direction of nuclear migration. This dynamic, polarized array could be organized by the microtubule nucleating factor gamma tubulin, which relocalized from the centrosome to the cell boundary as hypodermal cells intercalated. So what does Starr want to look at next? It's still a complete unknown how UNC84 gets to the internuclear membrane, so we're spending a lot of time on that, and we're still looking at things that regulate the microtubules to keep them in this polar organization. So we're going to do some screens to try to find mutants, um, but we really don't have a lot to go on right now. In the meantime, you can read more about how kinesin-1 and dynein cooperate to move nuclei in hypodermal cells in the paper by Fridolfsson and Starr, published in the October 4th edition of the Journal of Cell Biology.